at your library. I'm your host, Kathleen Clifford. Today we have the most favorite episode of mine every year, the What to Buy Holiday Gift Guide. And joining us today is Annie Philbrick from Bank Square Books and Savoy Bookshop. And thank you, Annie, for coming every year. Thank you. I, I use this opportunity to find out what to give for Christmas mm -hmm. and what to read Perfect. for next year. That sounds great. So I'm going to turn it over to you to tell us about what has come out in 2017 that okay. we should buy. Okay. Um, I'll start with um, Sing, Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. She just won the National Book Award for Fiction for the second time. She won it also in 2011 with Salvage the Bones. It's a story extremely well written, obviously set on the bayou of Mississippi. It involves parchment prison, heroin addiction, poverty, beautifully, beautifully written. Um, you know, a tough read, but totally worth the time. Um, another one for your mystery lovers is Girl in Snow by Donya Kukovka. Um, she was at the store earlier this year. It's about the mysterious disappearance of a 15-year-old girl in Colorado. Very deftly written, very um, great twist to it. Um, not too dark, but really good for either also somewhat young adult or people who just love a good mystery read. Okay. Um, another debut that came out that's really good is called Stay With Me by Ayabami Adebayo. She's Nigerian. Um, it's a story about, um, sort of, it's set in Nigeria when being a fa she's recently married and having children is very important to a Nigerian family. She's unable to get pregnant, so she has a pseudo pregnancy to try to please people. And sort of a story of a marriage, and then another woman intervenes, and the mother in law intervenes. But it's debut, really well written, you know, a little different, set in Nigeria with a beautiful standout cover. It really is. Um, one of my favorite out of the year is My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. Um, he also came to Savoy earlier this year. It's a beautiful color cover, it's set in Northern California outside Mendocino. It's dark, it's, dis it's um, disturbing. It's a story of a survivalist father and his 14-year-old girl named Turtle. And the mother has passed away. And there is some abuse that goes on. But Turtle manages to overcome it and get out of it through sort of her love of nature and befriending another sort of 14-year-old boy who helps see her that there is good in the world. Um, you will fall in love with Turtle as a hero and, and an amazing character in this beautifully written book. Um, another debut is called The Leavers by Lisa Coe. This was also a finalist for the National Book Award for Fiction. It's a debut. It's the winner of the Bellwether Prize for Social Justice, which is a prize that Barbara Kinsolver, the author of The Bean Trees and a number mm -hmm. of other books, gives every year. Um, it's published by Algonquin Publishing. Um, story of immigration. It's a young Chinese boy whose mother has disappeared in New York City and he doesn't know what happened to her. He eventually gets adopted by a pretty staid, sort of boring, middle-class school teacher white couple up in upstate New York. And he struggles with sort of what is his identity as a Chinese boy living in a, in a white American family. Um, there is a reunion at the end with his mother that's beautifully written, but um, a great favorite of a lot of people, really great readers. Um, one of my favorite books out of the year is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. Um, it's now out in paperback. Um, we will um, have some signed copies at the store this month of Christmas for in our holiday gift guide. Um, story of Korea and um, Korea in Japan, um, atmospheric family. Uh, I think you've read this, Kathleen. I, this is absolutely my favorite book of the year, and I plan on buying many copies from okay. gifts. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. <laughs> it just became um, today was noted one of the top 12 books of the year for the New York Times. Um, a really wonderful, wonderful, you know, historical fiction, uh, learning about a time in history that we really don't know much about. Exactly, and that's what I found most um, exciting about it is opening a whole new world right. that I was ignorant about. Right. And, and the Groton Public Library is going to be doing um, it for their book club in February. So if you get your copy now, you can be ahead of the game. Great, and it's, um, it's also... Um, uh, but what, what pachinko means, it means um, pinball machine, and so it gets into sort of the world of gambling, pinball gambling, um, sort of corruption, and sort of Korean mafia. Um, very, really fascinating world that we take us into. Um, one of my favorite voices this year in fiction is published by Tin House, called Rabbit Cake by Annie Hartnett. 
Um, she has done a couple, an event with us. She's also coming back to the store on December 14th to sign copies at Mystic at Bank Square Books. Beautifully written. Um, the, the, it's a young woman's story. Her um, mother used to always make her a cake in this rabbit cake mold. Um, it's just, it's, the, the voice is just something that will just endear you. Um, but just a really, really wonderful debut by Annie Hartnett. Um, a classic from the 80s that I use as my staff picks a lot um, is uh, Big Storm Knocked It Over by Lori Colwyn. Lori Colwyn's written a number of books, um, fiction and also sort of about uh, food and cooking. Um, she died way too young. There, this is a story um, set in Manhattan of the 90s. Um, family relationships, just really classic, really, really good fiction. Um, for another mystery lover, Henny Mankell, After the Fire, um, he's, a, he's uh, the Wallander series on Netflix is part of these books, but oh. they're a great series of mysteries set in, um, in an island up in Scandinavia, um, a retired doctor, his house mysteriously burns down um, and other houses burn down. It's not too dark, just great mystery. Nice. Um, another finalist for the National Book Award was a short story collection called Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Machado. Little um, edgy, great for your sort of young adult um, okay. or young millennial, like sort of edgy, really well written short story collections. Um, it'll kind of blow you away. And I'm not a big short story reader, but this was amazing. And I find that short stories are good gifts for people that are not huge readers because they can do a little bit at a time right. and then fall in love with the whole. Right, and some are connected. These ones are not necessarily connected, but they all sort of relate to each okay. other. Okay, excellent. And just to wrap it up, um, a cookbook for everyone called Homegrown by Matthew Jennings. Uh, Matthew Jennings owns the Townsman Restaurant in Boston. This is a very much of a New England cookbook. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a dinner with him at Stoneacres Farm with the Oyster Club people from Mystic. Matt's great, um, really fun recipes, really delicious. We've got a number of signed copies. Um, it's part of the New England Independent Booksellers Holiday Catalog. Um, just a really good cookbook for those person who loves to cook from New England. Mm -hmm. um, and then to finish up, for anyone who's a big gardener, the cut flower garden from Floret Farm in the Skagit Valley in Washington State. Um, this is the best cut flower book um, and we're growing cut flowers that I've ever seen. It's thorough. These people have an amazing Instagram um, to follow. It just is detailed but not too complicated and it's just absolutely beautiful. So for the flower enthusiasts or garden enthusiasts, this is what I would recommend Excellent. for the holidays. There are some beautiful books here. So if anybody's looking to buy me a gift this year, um, <laughs> any of these would be great. And you can go down to Bank Square Books or Savoy Bookshop, which is in Westerly. Right. And um, I'm sure your staff would help pick out anything for the anything. anything, any any kind of genre that they like. Any of these. These are just a selection that I went through. These are actually my top 12 books of the okay. year, which I do every year. Excellent. That's posted around the stores, but we are there to help you with whomever, whether it's a gift or something for you to read. And um, awesome. adults and kids and also mm -hmm. lots of sort of gift items that are book related. That's wonderful. Thank you so You're much welcome. for You're coming welcome. today. Thank you. Thank um, you. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, Kelsey is going to talk more about young adult and children's books for the holidays, so stay tuned. <laughs> Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. My name is Harvey Lauer. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Open road, here comes the Hefley family. Whether it's a short trip or a long haul. Estimated time, 47 hours. They will beg. You're hungry? I'm happy to provide. They will plead. Deep, Deep fried, fried butter, butter on, on a stick. stick. But whatever you do, don't wimp out. Now you're talking. Make them buckle up. They can't hurt. Remember, safety first. Cheese curls. Ah! Second. Are you orange?
Welcome back to At Your Library. As you know, today we're talking about holiday gift buying and specializing in books. And now we have with us the manager of Savoy, Savoy Bookshop in Westerly, Rhode Island. We have Kelsey April with us. And Kelsey is going to talk about young adult and children's book buying and give us some great ideas. Welcome back this year, Thanks, third Kathleen. year in our row. I'm really excited yeah, to have yeah. you. Yeah, I love doing this segment and it's always a pleasure to come and talk about kids' books. Excellent. Well, what did you bring for us today? Um, so I brought quite an assortment of things. Um, I'm a huge fan of picture books and I think the year of 2017 was a really good year for picture books. So I brought a lot of picture books um, to talk about today. The first one is um, absolutely darling. It's called Mice Skating. Um, it's by Anne Silvestro. It's illustrated by Tegan White, who's one of my favorite illustrators. And it's a really sweet winter story um, told about these, this group of mice and their friends. And uh, one of them, the main character, really loves winter. And, and she tries to coax her friends into coming outside and enjoying the, you know, the snowy weather. Um, and she gets them all ice skating in the end. And it's just really cute mm -hmm. and it's really sweet. Um, lovely story for boys and girls, really of any age. Um, so I highly recommend this one. Uh, the next one on my list is by a uh, small-ish press, uh, Flying Eye Books. Um, I'm a huge fan of this book, again because of the illustration, uh, but also because of the story itself. It's about this polar bear who washes up on shore of this island, and all the little critters on the island are like, where did this bear come from? Who is this bear? We're scared of this bear. It's different. It doesn't belong here. And in the end, they end up realizing that this bear is just lost and lonely and this bear has lost his home and so they decide that okay well we're going to welcome this bear to our island and and help this bear and, and so it's a really good story of acceptance and welcoming yes, what a timely book it's beautiful exactly it's a very timely book and again great for boys and girls of all ages so that's called leaf and that's by sandra diekman um the next one on my sh on my list uh is called the antlered ship and I know you can't physically touch this book through the TV, but it has a gorgeous package. It has really thick um, dust jacket, and the illustrations are by the Fan Brothers, which I'm a fan of the <laughs> Fan Brothers. Um, and it's, it's by uh, Dashka Slater, and it's a story about um, this fox who sees this antlered ship pull into port on his island. And so he goes down to the dock and meets this um, group of deer who are setting sail, who are on a quest to find this island with the sweetest grass and the shortest trees. And so um, the little fox says, well, maybe there will be other foxes that can help me answer all of my questions. So it's a book about adventure. It's a book about um, friendship and answering difficult questions. So again, really beautiful package here. Let's open it up so you can see the inside of it. Um, and there's the group of pirate pigeons that they meet. Everybody loves a good pirate. I know. <laughs> okay, so that's the antlered ship. Uh, next, uh, by Candlewick Press, uh, Windows by Julia Deno. So this is actually um, one of my favorite illustrated picture books for the year. Um, it's about this young person. It doesn't even say if it's a young boy or young girl, it's just a young person. Um, who takes their dog on a walk through the neighborhood and sees life through the windows um, of all the people in their neighborhood. And it's just, the, the, the color palette is just to die for. So you walk through and there's, you know, all the people in the neighborhood and he sees people eating dinner and having parties and doing all these things. And again, the color palette is just, just splashes on the page. Um, so this is one of my favorites. Again, good for all ages. Um, it has one of those sort of resonating messages that young and old alike will enjoy. So again, Julia Denos, Windows. And then I've got, I say all these are my favorite. It's true. <laughs> they really are all my favorite. So this is called Professional Crocodile. It's by Candle, uh, sorry, Chronicle. Um, and it's a wordless picture book. Again, gorgeous illustration. It's the story of this crocodile who, you know, he wakes up in the morning. This is one that I really have to flip through and show you the illustration. So he wakes up every morning. And he gets ready for work, right? He, he gets out of bed, uh, he has his breakfast, he gets dressed, he puts on his clothes. Um, you know, each panel has a different scene from his morning of going to work. Um, but the whole time you're wondering, I wonder what this crocodile does right. uh, as a professional crocodile. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. <laughs> you have to get to the end, but there are clues along the way. So as you get closer to the end of the story, you'll see that, um, you know, there's all sorts of people in these pictures. Like you see, there's a leopard here. Um, and then you get closer to the end. Let me see if I can find another, whoop, that's a little too close to the end there. <laughs> okay, so he's walking through. So I won't, I won't get any closer to the end so I don't spoil it for you. But this is a really fun, it's wordless. Again, great for all ages. 
gorgeous illustration. In the end, you got to come down to the store and take a look and see how this ends because it is wonderful. I know. I really need to know. I know, right? <laughs> Okay, um, and then the next one um, is volume two of Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This book um, is phenomenal. Um, I don't know if, if you've heard of the first volume oh, yes, of Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. Oh yes, we own the first one, yes. So volume two just came out. It's got 100 new women um, throughout the world, throughout history that have made an impact um, on, on our world. Um, and it's by um, a small press called Tim Timbuktu Labs. And it's run by these two Italian women who uh, were able to start the company through a Kickstarter fund. Um, and they're actually, they've hit the bestseller, the best, the um, New York Times bestseller list. Um, and this is just a whole new collection of stories. And it actually has um, one of my favorites in here, who's um, Sky Brown, who is one of the uh, youngest skateboarders on, uh, for Vans company, the um, skateboarding company. So each, um, if you're not familiar with what uh, Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls is, it's a collection of bedtime stories. Um, and each page has um, the Good Night Story and then an illustration of the woman. Um, and they're all, they're phenomenal. For, for girls of all ages can enjoy this. Um, you know, there are people that buy this for newborn, you know, girls or boys. And then, you know, for people who are reading independently. And then the cool thing about this one is that it actually comes with a map at the back of the book. Um, and if you unfold it, it shows you um, where all of these stories take place. So this oh, is something that, that's yeah, I, I have my copy at home. I'm going to tack this yeah, up on my wall. That is really. Um, and it has a legend at the bottom, too, so you can sort of think geographically where all these women are. Um, so that's the second volume of Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls by Timbuktu Labs. Uh, now let's get into a little bit of middle grade. I've got um, Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. Great for boys and girls, 8 to 12 years old. It's a story of magic. It's a story of friendship. Um, our, our main character, Morgan, has been um, uh, cursed with this terrible curse that she's to die at midnight on her 11th birthday. And then um, in comes this mysterious character who whisks her away to this magical city called Nevermore. Um, or called, I'm sorry, the... Um, to a school called Nevermore. Okay. And um, in, in Nevermore, she's able to avoid this curse. And, um, she, but she has to pass the trial to get into the school first. So it's, um, it's, it's wild, it's fun. Um, if you know, you're buying for somebody who loved Harry Potter, this gonna is going to be right up the alley. Also fans of Neil Gaiman too. So this oh, is really wonderful. Excellent. So again, Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow. Um, some realistic fiction for the same age group, 8 to 12 years old. This is called Beyond the Bright Sea by Lauren Wolk. Um, I'm a huge fan of hers. This is um, historical fiction. It's about a young girl who um, washes up on a shore off the, co off the coast of Massachusetts and um, is taken in by this um, sort of reclusive man who lives on the beach of this island. And he raises her as his own. And it's a story of identity. She's trying to find out where she came from. And it's a story of family. It's about understanding that family is not always um, you know, who your blood related to you, but who you choose as your family. Um, and there's a little bit of mystery in here. Um, it, and it's just, it's wonderful. It's a solid recommendation for any boy or girl, really, who um, enjoys historical fiction, realistic fiction. Uh, so again, Beyond the Bright Sea. Um, and then I have a couple of uh, young adult novels, uh, the first of which is a debut novel by Margaret Rogerson called An Enchantment of Ravens. Um, this book is a riot. It is so much fun. It's um, uh, a story of uh, fairies. So the main character in this lives in a town um, where uh, fairies exist and um, humans have this uh, ability called the craft. And it's essentially everything that fairies cannot do, and it's creating, so painting, oh. cooking, uh, writing, all these things. And so the fairies commission humans to perform these tasks for them. So our main character, Isabel, is a portrait artist. And all the fairies in the land come to Isabel and sit to have their portraits done. And as a payment, she gets to have an enchantment from these, uh, these fairies to protect her. And so, uh, very soon after the story starts, Isabel meets the very handsome Autumn Prince, who comes in and, of course, sweeps her off her feet. And they, um, he, he takes her away. Or he commissions her for a portrait. 
and is not happy with the portrait. Oh. So he whisks her away to the fairy world and is going to have her stand trial for her crimes. Um, and of course along the way they fall in love and um, it's a really fun romp of a story, very quick read. Um, definitely for boys and girls who enjoy a, ro a good romance, a good story of fairy. If you've ever read Holly Black before, you're going to love this one. Um, so again, Enchantment of Ravens, Margaret Rogerson. This is a debut YA novel. Nice. Last but not least, um, a, another favorite of mine, Patrick Ness is a young adult author um, who really hits the nail on the head when it comes to gay characters. So this is a novel called Release. It's about a young boy named Adam growing up in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, he comes from a very sort of rigid religious family. And he has an older brother who's trying to follow in his father's footsteps. And their father is a, a pastor of a, a kind of a failing church. And um, Adam's older brother has the faith but not the personality ah. to follow in his father's footsteps. But Adam has the personality, not the faith. Um, and of course, Adam is gay and his family doesn't know this. And so his, um, his life that he, he wants to lead chafes with the life that his parents want him to lead. So this is about um, sort of confronting your fears as far as talking to your family about who you really are. And the cool thing about this book is that it takes place over the course of one day. Oh, so, wow. And it's told in alternating perspectives with the main character, Adam, and also this ethereal character sort of coming to terms with why she's dead. And those seem unrelated before you read it. And then as you read it, you realize that the stories are really interwoven. Um, and it's a really good... Um, boy-girl friendship without the romance in here. Adam's best friend is a girl. They talk really openly about sex. They talk really openly about um, school and a lot of the hard subjects that teens maybe find it hard to talk about outside of a book. So this has got some really good content in it. It is mature. I recommend 14 and up on this okay. one. Um, but really, really solid read. Patrick, nice, Patrick Ness's writing is beautiful. Excellent. The so cover is really fun too. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's yeah. Um, yeah, eye catching for sure. You think it should go this way but it actually goes this way. Which will say a lot about the book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, so that's released by Patrick Ness, and that is, that is it. That's all I brought today. Wow, that is a lot to get around. Those are beautiful books, yeah. and again, if you want to buy them, you can go to Savoy Bookstore or Bank Square Books, and if you don't find those, you can find something else. Thank you so much yes. for coming. Thank it's you again, It's always Kathleen. exciting. So this has been At Your Library. Thanks for checking in.